<laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Stephen Bird. I'm a chiropractor with Chiro Movement Muscle and Joint Clinic. This is... I'm Nicole, and I am a functional personal trainer as well as a strength trainer. So, Nicole has gone through um, a few different certifications, if you want to call them those. Uh, one that we have been pushing pretty heavily is functional range conditioning. Um, it has been wonderful, but today we want to talk about something that's actually a little bit different. We want to talk more about what the differences are between ab work and true core work. There's a massive difference there because mm -hmm. abs could be one set of muscles, where core could be from top to bottom, side to side, front to back. It's a lot of muscles all involved. How do we differentiate between ab work that's going to maybe get somebody a so-called six-pack in the differences and benefits of working more true core. Right, so the Adominus Rectus, the, that six-pack that everybody you know idolizes, is really just a muscle for spinal flexion and extension. Right. Whereas core work is using all of those deep abdominal muscles in the front and the back all over. And this is really important for athletes because athletes are always having to twist and turn, but not just athletes. Like think about your daily life carrying in groceries. You're not gonna pick it up in like a sagittal plane. Right, right. Right? So we really wanna strengthen the muscle's 360 capacity. That way you remain injury free, but also you're strong in all sorts of ranges of motion, whether you're an athlete or just someone going through day to day life. Right. It's kind of interesting when you talk about the differences between the two because we, in a gym setting, you see machines that are very set on one plane of motion. A plane of motion would be in what uh, way do, does a person move for strengthening up those muscles. If we're talking the sagittal plane, that is a, a plane of motion where everything is a hinge forward. Everything is in one set forward plane here. We're talking in frontal plane, that is actions of lateral bend, lateral bend. If we're talking transverse plane, that is the rotation aspect of the muscles, um, or of the motion themselves. When we talk in, or when we help people with, with adding in exercises for rehab, we have to remember that rehab is doing some form of exercise in the presence of pain or trying to get them out of pain. We can use exercises in many different ways, but sometimes it is for teaching a person how to load muscles better, how to strengthen those muscles. In core work, we talk in the way of strengthening the whole section. We call it the trunk, we call it the torso. Well, that includes everything from the abdominal diaphragm, or the uh, diaphragm here, pelvic diaphragm low, the front muscles, the side muscles. They all have names, the back muscles as well. One of the big things that I like to add in for every uh, rehab is some form of an anti-rotation exercise. And that is something that we show in our videos called the Paloff Press. Um, certain activities with a kettlebell or with a mace, depending on what we're doing. So, how is it you add in exercises? Like, what's one of your go-to exercises to help strengthen core, not abs? Right, so he actually mentioned the Paloff Press. That is one of my favorites because it creates this environment of instability, and then you therefore have to use your torso, core, trunk muscles, whatever you wanna call it, to counteract these forces that are laterally pulling you. So in that environment of instability, you really have to work that whole core. Um, another one I absolutely love is the dead bug. It really forces you to use your core in kind of an odd position where your knees are up and most people aren't sitting that way. So a lot of the time, you know, just even us, we're sitting in these chairs and we're not engaging our core. So we're kind of emulating that position, but forcing you to use that core and those deep abdominal muscles to really work in that movement. We're not doing any of that flexing. We're just holding, isolating, and really contracting all the muscles around that core. Right, right. Um... On that note as well, I think some of the bigger aspect is understanding the person in front of us, depending on what they what they do for their every day to day, depending on the environment that they put themselves into. If or, if you're a person that sits all day long, core work is going to have a lot of dividends quickly for you because you're going to notice 
certain things like possibly back pain doesn't hurt so bad. Hip pain may not be so much of a, of a, a problem for you. A um, lot of things improve when we work off of the core first and then go out. Um, it's, it's hard when you're trying to isolate, okay, this is core work because something such as like a squat or a front rack squat or something like that or a kettlebell swing or even doing running with a different posture could be core work for you. It just depends on the person itself and the person at hand. Um, when we're assessing people, we're also looking at, for one thing, where a person breathes from. Do they breathe all upper chest or do they understand how to utilize that lower abdominal area for breathing and bracing? Now, breathing and bracing are two different skills. We don't want to talk about breathing as a person doesn't know how. It's just maybe that they are in a pattern that isn't, isn't utilizing core to a optimum uh, position or pattern, right? right? So depending on the person, depending on the needs, depending on the, we'll call it skill level, you may start in different areas of understanding how to breathe or understanding how to use, utilize core within your exercises. But that is sometimes more of the starting point for us is do you understand how to strengthen this before trying to strengthen something simple like a bicep curl or you know, a leg press machine. Uh, those are all important, but we want to make sure that we understand how to utilize this first right. before worrying about other areas. You know, I this might be kind of goofy, but I tell my clients that the core is called the core for a reason. Like, it should be the core of your movements. So, like everything you do, like he said, squats, deadlifts, overhead press, bench, you should really know how to activate this that way you'll have contr more control, kind of radiating control through your appendages. That's called proximal to distal. That's, you could probably elaborate on that a little bit. Oh, more. that was great, yeah. So, um, so really just learning how to actually use your core, which Dr. Bird said is from the diaphragm, clear down to the pelvis, you know, that's going to change your life astronomically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh, if you have any questions off of any of this, please, we're going to continue to push content. We have pushed content that shows and utilizes some of the exercises we use uh, as part of exercises and rehabs for the core. We want to just make sure that you understand that there's more to it than doing sit-ups and push-ups and, uh, or crunches all day long. So we're going to do different exercises that are going to help from the core out as part of the Part of our process so we appreciate you watching if you have any questions from off of this please let us know if you like what you see please hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well and we we appreciate it have a good one thank you did you just do jazz hands <laughs>